Friday night, August the 17th, I dreamt I saw a calendar month in November. It was bent, it was torn, it was dirty. I saw trees in the backgrounds that were leafless, but there were a few trees that still had a scarce amount of leaves on them, and they had turned. The leaves that were still in those trees had turned like, like it was about to rain. Uh, the sky was a dull gray with extreme cloud cover. Uh, I hardly ever see sunny skies in these dreams. That's one thing I know for sure. I saw that finger appear, and it circled November 3rd continuously uh, in, a continu in, a, in a clockwise direction. And then suddenly, it changed to counterclockwise, and then these images began to appear. I saw cities on fire, uh, which is not, was nothing new. I saw headlines that read, Trump victory challenge everywhere. It was on digital marquees, like in New York, uh, Times Square, places like that. There were protesters in the streets who were, they were weary and asleep, and they appeared dirty and dingy like they had not slept or showered in weeks. And this bell rang. And suddenly these people, like, come to life. They woke up and they started salivating like a dog, like Pavlov's dog situation. Big buckets of saliva. And it seemed to stay in their shirts. And I saw people screaming and getting violent over the election results to the point people were firing weapons just randomly into the air, into the sky. People were angry and people were mad. Um, I saw a person with a sign and it said, the obvious winner is not so obvious, like a placard, like, you know, the world's about to end, God's coming, you know, get ready to, you know, whatever, the whole signs. But it said, the obvious winner is not so obvious. And he held his head in shame. But the crowd was in a, was in a frenzy of hatred. Uh, they were even hitting each other with, you know, with, with, with their signs and their banners and, and their wrath. And I saw more cities with pillars of smoke over them, like, like, a wild, like the wild firestorms in, uh, in California right now. I, I saw crumbled and burned out buildings in Washington, D.C. Not monuments, but businesses and commercial real estate. Headlines declared that rebuilding would take time and trust would take even longer and government could, could not do it in a timely fashion. And that's when I saw... A Treasury official who's in the Treasury Department right now wink like as almost as if he's looking at a camera on TV. Big smile, open mouth, wink right eye, and held the clothes. And just kind of, you know, almost like a sarcastic type thing. And then I saw a Conestoga wagon. Think a Little House on the Prairie. And Kamala Harris was driving that wagon. It was led by two mules. And Joe Biden was not sitting with Kamala Harris. Joe Biden was riding on one of the mules on the left, on the far left, so to speak. At, at her side, it was a mechanical box that would trigger dynamite like you would see in the Wild e. Coyote movies, you know, where it's cartoons where they push down and it blows up. Um, it was in an upright position, though, that, like the mark of the trigger. And then the wind started blowing the, the wagon covering back and revealed several cases of like what, you, what I would consider to be Civil War-type cases of dynamite, that era, the eight, late 1800s, 1860s, 1870s. Um, and most of it was in cases, stamped dynamite, stamped dynamite. There were some loose, loose ones in a, like a, an open wicker basket, which didn't fit the timeline, but, but it was there. And Harris began to whip the mules and uh, with the whip, and she was hitting Joe Biden as well. Biden had no idea he was being whipped, he was not aware of what was happening. And the mules started moving. Uh, and picking up speed, they were headed towards a, car, a target. And and this is where I saw Hillary Clinton was standing behind President Trump. President Trump was on his knees. And she was wearing like a Wilma Flintstone dress. Uh, there were patches where it had not been finished yet. It wasn't seamed up. It wasn't sealed up. The collar wasn't on. There were like little strings just hanging all over the place. It was it was almost, it wasn't finished. It wasn't it wasn't actually ready to be worn, I guess, for prime time or what she was doing. Um, it was very ugly. And she had this gaudy, gaudy ring on her, on her index finger. It looked like it had blood on it. Uh, she had the skeleton key hanging from her neck. And it was dangling. And she had, basically, she had Donald Trump with a, he was on his knees, and she had a gladius, Roman gladius knife to, his, to the left side. It was the left side of his throat holding his head back like that. And the skeleton key was dangling in front of his face. And the skeleton key looked like it had blood and black mold all over it. And where it had laid down, it was, where it was banging against the front of her shirt, it looked like it left like a Nazi symbol. Uh, the stormtroopers, you know, the Nazi SS had the, like, almost like the lightning signal, the lightning strike, the double pane of lightning. That's what it looked like on the front of her shirt. Uh, 
I'm not saying she's a Nazi. I'm just saying that symbol, that symbol was, was on her shirt. And it was like just tainted, stained, black, red, ugly, gaudy. Um, and the wagon starts picking up speed, and they're headed towards this, you know, Hillary Clinton's holding Donald Trump. And uh, Hillary's face was giddy. Uh, but next to her leg, it was like an animal trap. A large, like a bear trap. Um, and suddenly Trump grabs the key and he pulls it down like this. Well, he grabbed it with his left hand. When she came down, he brought his right hand up and hit her in the face, in the shin. When she did that, she dropped the knife and she, and she, she stepped back. Um, and the president began to run off quickly. Well, then she steps into the trap. And she's, and she's trying to get out, and she's trying to pick up the knife, and she can't lean over, she can't get the trap, she can't get the knife. As the president runs, he's running towards the beast, which is the car he's in, he, he is usually in. I hear three gunshots, and they're handgun shots. It's not a shotgun or a rifle, this is a handgun shot. I hear three shots fired. And I know where I see three different, and it, it happens like there's one shot, then another, then another. But as Trump is running to the beast, all... A, a Secret Service agent jumps in front and gets one of the bullets and then rolls to the ground. Trump keeps running. The second shot's fired. Another Secret Service agent jumps in front of Trump and takes the shot and hits the ground. And then the third Secret, agent, Secret Service agent jumps in front of the third bullet that, that, that comes at him. And then he gets into the beast. At that moment, what I saw was the Secret Service agents were around the beast, but instead of normal, modern, traditional... AR-15s or guns, they had muskets. But the other thing I noticed in the dream that none of them were wearing glasses. The most secret service agents that I've always seen have always had sunglasses. And I noticed in the dream, they're all standing around the car looking out with the muskets like this. Nobody nobody has it like this. They've got the, they've got the muskets up and they're watching and they're looking around. And they're surrounding the car looking out from the car. The car is moving slowly and they're moving with the car. So... Those are the things I've seen now. Um, Hillary tried to pull her leg away. She couldn't. And finally the wagon struck her. It was a, it was a huge explosion. And in, in the explosion, it threw the carcasses of the mules up on top of the building rubble. And the smoke was coming off them like, like they'd been grilled or something. Uh, Biden was laying face down in the middle of the street, and he had wheel tracks over the back of it. And it was a vulture sitting on his head. And, I'm not, and I, I'm not trying to make fun. I'm not trying to disrespect anyone in political leadership at this moment. Those that know me know how I feel about certain people in leadership. But I still pray for these people. Harris was crying in disbelief. And, she, and her tears looked like they were the size of quarters. It was almost like she was crying quarters. The tears were as big as quarters. And it, and it appeared like they were, they were, they were, it looked like quarters coming out of her eyes. Um. There was a huge hole in the ground. The buildings were collapsed. Um, and then I saw the church. There was a separation line. And there was no middle ground. No middle ground left. As the sides literally, at, at, but, but I guess in the dream, this, at this time of the dream, sides had to have been taken. There was fire on the altars and the churches around the nation. And the fire moved on the heads of people who had been praying. And above the heads of many people in the church, I saw the I saw an actual question mark symbol above their head, and they appeared confused by what they were seeing in the world in the church. And I heard a voice say, "Those who refuse to get ready will be wanting in the end." So brace yourself and tell others that I have warned them to brace themselves, for they are about to see even more shocking things. I'm thinking of a backing there, a passage that I have preached from in the last several weeks. Friday night, 24, August 21st, I simply saw the white figure appear, raised a finger to the sky, and he said, ready or not, nation, here it comes. Brace yourself. Just a rather quick and simple, you know, play on hide and seek, I guess. And last night, Monday, August 24th, I saw a calendar. It's the turn of the month of November. It has shadows flickering all over it. I saw this light in the sky, a big light, very large, bright light, and then darkness. And then I began to make out like a morning. It was, it was morning, and the, the night was going away, and the fog and the haze were drifting away. 
and I saw there were many Americans, and they were in like an emergency shelter. Uh, I'm not for sure, but it seemed to me it was more along the Gulf Coast area. These people were huddled together, and they were shivering. There were individuals laying on cots, and there were suitcases all over the place, and a lot of desperate looks on the faces of most everyone. Uh, there were encouragers in the crowd, though. They all were wearing crosses. And, and they stood out emotionally uh, from everyone else because they seemed to have hope. They had smiles on their face. Everybody else was just downtrodden in despair, angry, frustrated, confused. And they, they were checking on people. They were trying to show patience and kindness, but, but at times they were met with anger and told to go away. But the encouragers just kept doing what they were doing in spite of the manifested upset of several in the shelters. And I saw businesses that were shuttered in the bigger cities. I saw gas stations. It looked like just people, people just walked away from them. And I saw headlines. And one read, shock and awe in the U.S. And one read, U.N. steps in to help host nation. And the nation was quiet. There wasn't war or riots or people fighting or screaming or yelling. The nation was quiet, almost like it had not awakened him, not awoken from a bad dream yet. That's what I was kind of sensing. The nation was fitful. It was suspicious. It was leery. I saw people just quietly looking around and, and, and taking everything in with their eyes. Hesitant. It's very hot, like they were expecting something to happen. And the sun was shining behind the clouds, but it was not out yet. And then the white figure appeared again. And he said, remain braced as this calm comes before a gathering storm that recovery will have a hard time finding. Remain braced as this calm comes before a gathering storm that recovery will have a hard time finding. I'm just sharing what I'm seeing. I know I wasn't supposed to share the one dream last week. I think maybe for the piece I had last night, I get glimpses sometimes from time to time. But this one, another one that I'm feeling. 